didn't see you there. So it's been about a year since I did a wood shop tour. My name is Caleb. I'm the owner of Living in Tent Yurt Company. Um, and today we are going to do the Living in Tent Wood Shop Tour 2021. So generally when material comes in, we'll forklift it off and then we put it on this reciprocating shelf here. This way we have our birch and our bamboo, um, you know, our, our spoil board, MDF, that kind of stuff. <laughs> this becomes also some miscellaneous storage throughout the days. Um, but yeah, so it comes in here. Um, pretty much everything in the wood shop is moved around on these carts. Uh, this is a mixture of ones we've bought and built. Um, and so as you can see here, this is our 20 foot rafters as well as our 24 foot rafters here. And so as we're working them through the wood shop, uh, we can we can move them throughout and then take them out to the oiling station outside. So coming around here, this is uh, the primary glue up table. So underneath we keep a lot of clamps. Um, this is where I do a lot of the dominoing when we're assembling doors. This is also where a lot of the sanding happening happens. Um, so as you can see here, these are some doors that I just uh, glued up recently on this table here. And then coming around, so over here is where we keep a lot of saw blades. This is where the miter station is. Uh, in here we have just miscellaneous dome hardware, drill bits, you know, miscellaneous things if we need to fix anything or change anything out. Underneath we like to keep a lot of our adhesives, finishes, that sort of thing, like to keep the welder under there. Under there, keep the, you know, the, the beam saw as well as the domino joiner. Um, and then coming around here, we keep a lot of the fasteners. So we use a lot of inch and a quarters for assembling door frames, a lot of three inchers, all of our sanding pads we keep over here. Um, and then a lot of like hand tools, so battery powered, angle grinder, you know, worm drive, that kind of stuff under there. Um, and throughout here, just, you know, different impact drivers, drills. This is our second miter saw. This allows us to process uh, rafters out of fur a lot faster, being able to do both miters in one shot. Come around here, this is where we keep a lot of the fasteners for like the, the, uh, the compression rings, um, doorknobs, hinges, any of that sort of hardware that we might need to have. It's where we keep the track saw and the HEPA dust collection system. This is another wall of clamps that we have um, for some of our bigger glue ups. The bandsaw, which we use a lot for doing uh, the thresholds and you know other miscellaneous projects. Uh, the drill press, so the drill press is pretty much just set up with a plug cutter. <clears throat> and that way, whenever we're trying to, you know, anytime we're, we're drilling any holes, we're able to plug them with whatever material we're using. This kind of area over here is the door area. Right here you can see this is a 3-0 door um, that Matthew is working on right now. And so we start them out, they look like that, and then we put them through this wide belt sander here, get them flat and sanded. Then we can take them over to the CNC and perfectly square the doors as well as cut the shelves. This table here was designed by uh, Galen, um, who used to work here, and it was just an amazing idea. So this, this uh, one inch piece of birch has dados in it that line exactly up with a door frame. So as we're assembling the door frame, you have your piece of sapile threshold here, your piece of sapile jams, and they all just drop down into this negative space here. And that allows you when you're doing your door frame glue up to know, make sure that all of your components are perfectly dead square. And that just makes it super easy so we can just pull the door off the CNC, drop it into the frame, um, and this is a frame here for this 3-0 door. And, and that way, you know, you know you're know you dealing with all square elements to work with. Back behind here, this is where we keep a lot of our door making components. So, you know, a threshold that's made up here. This is all trim stock. Uh, we work a lot with Sapile and we buy that in the rough. And so we try to use as much of it as we possibly can. So once we make up the doors, there's all the fall off pieces. Some of those we laminate together. Like this threshold, for instance, over here, you can see the lines, the slight variation in color. We've actually taken that fall off sapile because we don't want to waste any of it, laminate it up, and then create a, you know, a piece of wood large enough to work with. So trim, astracles, this is uh, our router template for doing the thresholds. This is also where we keep our hinge router patterns, and then weather stripping, Pretty much anything that goes into door making is in this area right here. Over here is the Delta 8 inch joiner. 
I recently upgraded this to a helical head, which just makes for a much smoother finish coming off of the joiner. Um, and it really, we're putting thousands of board feet of sapile, which is really tough through there, and it, it does an amazing job. Over here is where we keep our rough saw and sapile. We're getting pretty low right now, so I'm gonna have to re-up. This comes in between six and 10 inches wide in the rough, 13 feet long. So we'll take the beam saw to it, split it in half, stack it over here. That way we can process it from here, get two square surfaces on the joiner, um, put it through the planer over here and then the table saw so we have some dimensional lumber to work with. This over here is the planer, uh, Powermatic planer. I'm a big fan of Powermatic. Um, Carl, uh, my good friend who taught me most of the woodworking, I know he always uses Powermatic and they just make awesome tools. You know, this is our, the table saw here, this is a model. Powermatic 66, this thing is just a workhorse. Um, a lot of these Powermatic tools I have are from the 80s and they just kick ass. Um, yeah, so I got the planer Powermatic, that's a, a 19 inch. Over here is the real beast of the wood shop. I guess probably the CNC is now, but this was always, this is, it's called a time saver and it's called a time saver for a reason. Um, you know, 40 inch being able to, 40 inch wide, being able to just flatten doors, sand rafters, panels for the lower panels on our, our um, half light doors. Just an incredible time saver. Um, this is the 30 gallon. This runs pretty much all of our pneumatic tools, pin nailers, air for this, as well as, you know, just blowing off any tables. Under here, I, I like to keep my generator. This is for if we're doing carpentry on site. So we can pull this out and, and bring that on site and have the ability to use our kind of more uh, powerful um, hand tools. This is the pattern here that we use for uh, finding locations for our acrylic dome skylights. So you lay it on here and it's all marked out with the different sizes, how high up you need to install the hardware that we know, that way we know we're, we're nailing it first time. And then coming down this way, this is our dust collection system. I piped this up and so all the tools have their own designated uh, designated ports with all metal glass gates and this really helps with the vacuum that we have in the wood shop. Um, yeah, and then as coming around here, we use shapers for a lot of things. When things come off the CNC, they have tabs. So this is a great way to put a profile on a piece of wood, like our lattice, rafters, um, lower tees on our rafters and uh, put a profile as well as knock the, the, um, the little tabs off of there. So both of these shapers are set up for different purposes. That means that we don't have to spend all the time constantly readjusting and setting up. We just have these set up so we can roll them out and be ready to use them at any, mo any moment. Um, they both have pretty powerful um, power feeders. This shaper actually was the only tool I ever bought and that I, I wasn't able to have it run when I purchased it, but it just came up for such an amazing price. The whole top was just rusted, so I resurfaced it and then opened this up, rewired it to the extent that I'm able to. Um, and when I got into this whole thing, I pulled probably 50 acorns out of that because squirrels had just gotten all in it. Now, I don't know, six months later, it's, it's rocking and we use it most days. Um, and then coming over here is our lumber shelf. Usually we have more four quarters of pile and that lives here right now. It's just kind of some miscellaneous bamboo cup pieces that just didn't really have another home right now. This is where we keep our finished doors. So when the doors are glued up, we have a designated fixture that we take them to the CNC and that cuts um, the door perfectly square and cuts in the shelf. So once the doors are glued up, Y belted and CNC, they then live on this rack here we've got a 3.0, behind it we have the full light 28 inch French door um, doors. And then uh, over here, this is where we have our router table. This is where we do the profile on the ends of all of our lattice. This is also with a five degree bevel, we put the uh, a slight five degree on all of our cups for when we're doing glue ups on the compression rings of the yurts. Then um, back here, I have my Ing Ingrisol 60 gallon um, air compressor that I have directly piped into this air dryer here and so um, with the CNC you know I just want to make sure that all the air that's going into it um, to run the tool changer and everything is just bone dry air for the longevity of the machine so that's always turned on when we're when we're running the CNC 
This is where we store um, completed door frames before they're ready for assembly. So yeah, doors there, door frames here. So as you can see, we have a 3.0 here as well as a French door frame ready to be routered, finished, sanded, all the steps to finish one of our door frames. Over here and over here is where we store all of our inventory of compression rings. Um, this is a design I came up with. It's a, I call it the concentric ring design. Um, so on the top here would be either a 20 or a 24 foot yurt. And then while it's running the sheet, so there's almost no waste on the bamboo, we run a 16 foot yurt ring, a 14 foot yurt ring, and a camping yurt ring. Um, and that way, yeah, when, when those orders come, we have all this inventory here ready to be assembled. And then coming through here, last, last tour, this was, uh, there was lots of walls here and stuff, but we tore that down. Um, this is our newest tool here. This is a five by 10 shop saver CNC. Um, and over here is our control module. So this is where all of the files live. And this is how you control the CNC. Um, this thing is just an absolute game cha changer. Um, most all of the components of the yurt now are CNC'd. And that just brings uh, our ability to bring our yurts up to a new level of uh, just precision and uh, consistency. Coming around here, we have a bunch of assembled compression rings. One that's uh, we oiled today. We like to wait to oil them until they're about to go out. This will be going up this weekend. This is where we keep a lot of our domes. We do tinted as well as clear in several different sizes. Now this is a mess back here. This is kind of more of the employee area, hangout area. But right here, what we're doing is we're uh, just starting to CNC a bunch of this rigid foam for our new rigid foam panel system for the roofs of our yurts, adding that extra R10 um, onto the top of the yurts. So then coming around here, another rack. This is where we keep lattice, um, T components, rafter components waiting for assembly. This is a finished French door that'll be going out early next week. We like to put all of our doors on rollers so they're easy to work around, you know, as we're, as we're assembling them, as well as uh, just being able to move them throughout the shop. So we have lots of these that we've made up so that, you know, the doors can always be mobile. Um, here's the 3.0 door that's going out this weekend. Behind it, you can see a bunch of, a big stack of uh, different yurts lattice walls that are oiled and completed. Um, and they will be ready to be bundled up and either shipped, picked up, or brought on site to be installed. Thank you for following along and watching the video to the end. Also, thank you to all the people who chose us to build them yurts this year. It was a massive year, and all of this expansion and all these new tools wouldn't be possible um, without just the amount of work we've had and just the amazing customers we worked with. So I can't wait to show you what our 2022 shop tour will bring, but for now, um, yeah, it's me signing off.